Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo, and in this video, we're gonna talk about planning out your smart home automations. As always, if you prefer a written version, head on over to techtechandmoretech.com or check the link in the description just below that like button. Home automations are great, except for when they randomly don't work or when they work, but not perfectly, and then your wife yells at you. I've shown in previous videos various home automations I have implemented in my home, and while most of them work well, there are plenty of times when I wish they were either more comprehensive or that they could just simply read my mind. Well, since mind reading based automations aren't quite available, we'll have to settle for the next best thing, which is more comprehensiveness. This is achieved not only by adding more and more conditions to your automation platform of choice, or multiple platforms in my case, but by documentation. But let's take a half step back and take a look at how you can plan out your automations in order to maximize their usefulness and minimize the amount of times your wife yells at you. I'll talk both about keeping track of all your current automations as well as planning out any future ones so aspects of this video will be applicable to both beginners and veterans in the home automation world. The first thing we need is a spreadsheet. All good projects start with a spreadsheet and sometimes a Gantt chart, but it's not necessary this time. This may seem over the top for some of you that only have a couple simple automations all in one place. But when you've got a few dozen spread out across several apps and platforms, it's really useful to have it all written down in one place. I've had times where my lights will turn on randomly and I have no idea why, and I have no recollection of setting an automation for that particular time of day or that setting. So the first step of the spreadsheet is going to be listing out all your automations. And if you're just starting, write down all the automations you would like to add. Don't be stingy with your words just because Excel may look ugly. It's better to be descriptive, especially if you have a couple different automations that work similarly. The next step is to locate all the automations. For some, all your automations may live in a single app, but if you're just starting out, you may not necessarily know where something will be, which is fine. But when you do create the automation, note down where it's set up, like which app. Since no single app or platform is perfect, it can take some experimentation to find the right platform or even figure out which platforms are best for which tasks. I personally have automations set up within Home Assistant, the iOS Home app, the Home Plus app, Eve, and even the Amazon Alex app. There's really no special reason for this other than no single app or platform can do everything I want. Home Assistant is probably the closest, but can't do everything. Thus, I have this hodgepodge of automations everywhere. Trust me, I would love to have them all in one place. And maybe by the end of this video, I can consolidate many of these automations under one roof, but probably not. Honestly, sometimes I feel like I need a whole separate house just for testing out all of this stuff. But anyways, by knowing where everything is set up, it makes troubleshooting just a little bit easier since you won't spend 10 minutes opening up each app looking through the automations to see where the problematic one is. The next two columns in your spreadsheet may seem obvious, but you'll realize that by writing them down, you may save some time and trouble down the line. Triggers and conditions are essentially the basis of an automation. The trigger is the event that kicks it all off, and the condition is what it gives it nuance so that the automation is adapted around your life. As an easy example, you want your lights to turn on when you come home but you don't need them to turn on in the middle of the day. So you add a condition that they only turn on when you come home and it is dark out. Here's where listing everything out helps not only with seeing the broader picture of how everything is set up, but by isolating everything into a cell, you can identify where something may be going wrong or where something can be improved. Going with the previous example, our automation description is for lights turn on when I come home. Your trigger is your geolocation, typically using the GPS in your cell phone. Your condition is when it is dark, and your action is when the lights turn on. Prior to home automation, when it got dark and you turned your lights on manually, you weren't measuring the amount of light in a room or checking what time it is relative to sunset. You're just noticing that it's dark and you want the lights on. However, if you want to automate this action, you need to quantify dark. By writing out what your condition is, you can then also think about how to tell the computer what your idea of dark is. 
This may all seem very straightforward and logical, but sometimes as a tinkerer or as beta testers, we often accept that something may not be perfect and move on, even though there may be a solution to get it closer to perfect, which is what we should be striving for in my opinion. Especially if you need the seal approval from your spouse. The next column is simply just actions, which lays out which scene is set or which devices are activated. Again, this just helps with troubleshooting, especially if you move things around or reset a device, you can keep better track of why something is behaving a certain way. The penultimate column is how well the particular automation is working. You can define the range yourself, but to me it makes sense to have a scale of doesn't work at all, sometimes works, works most of the time, and works perfectly. If you have works perfectly, then that's great, your work is done but it also helps to know what the setup of the automation is when it is working perfectly in case your automations get reset or a software glitch messes something up. You then have a record of how it was set up when it was working perfectly and you don't have to go through the iterative cycle of setting it up again. However, if something isn't working perfectly, that's when you can start taking notes and troubleshooting why something may not be working. Perhaps a trigger isn't reliable enough. Perhaps the conditions aren't perfect either, or maybe the app or the device that's giving you the information is unreliable. Going back to the example before, for the longest time I had the conditions of my come home lights on automation set so that it would only turn on if it was within two hours of sunset. And while that worked almost perfectly, I noticed that there's a big difference in brightness if it was a cloudy day or a sunny day. Most sunny days, even two hours before sundown, there was plenty of light in my living room. But on an overcast day, even four hours before sundown, it was dark enough for me to want the lights on. So while the automation mostly worked, it could be improved upon. I needed to redefine what dark was. So instead of using an arbitrary time before sundown, I instead decided to measure and quantify darkness. The Hue motion sensor is a great device because not only is it a motion sensor, it's also a temperature sensor and a light level sensor. So with some experimentation of placement of the device and checking on the lux levels, I finally found a way to quantify darkness. So now the condition is no longer two hours before a sunset, but instead when the lightness is below a certain lux level, turn the lights on. Now could I have done this without the spreadsheet? Mm, sure. But having the notes and having all the elements of the automation laid out helped me isolate what the issue was and how to think about addressing it. Once you get to the point where you have dozens of automations, just listing them all out is very helpful, as you may notice that certain actions will clash with others. If you were to try and go through them all from memory, chances are you would miss something. There's a reason why all experimentation and science involves copious amounts of notes. It takes little effort to write something down or you know, record something with your voice, but it takes even less effort to forget it altogether. Having a spreadsheet can also help with troubleshooting. Not all automations are made equally and not all apps and platforms are made equally either. I've had plenty of times when automation is set up perfectly in one app and doesn't work. And then it's set up the exact same way in another app and it does work. In an ideal world, all platforms have equal amounts of integrations and options for home automations, and they all work reliably 100% of the time. However, we're still basically in the baby phase of smart home automation, and it's going to be a while before that is a reality. In the meantime, we'll just have to endure the hardships of being early adopters, so why not make our lives a little bit easier and have a plan for it all? I hope this video was helpful to you and your home automation journey. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe button for plenty more videos to come. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will get to them as best I can. And until next time, see ya.